वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर विभा शर्मा एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एम सी एम डेवी कॉलेज चंडीगढ़ लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू दिस मॉड्यूल वी नो एंड वी हैव टू लर्न फ्रॉम द हिस्ट्री सो द हिस्ट्री ऑफ सिविल सर्विस इन इंडिया बिकम्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड the services today this module traces the origin of the civil services during different phases of the development as well as the evolution of administration in india learning objectives the learning objectives of this module are to understand the structure of the civil services during british period in india to study the evolution of civil services after independence in india to know about the committees and the commissions which had significantly contributed to reform the civil services as well as the existing pattern of civil services in the country meaning of civil services civil service is a body of professional full time officials employed to handle the civil affairs of a state in a non political capacity herbert feiner says the civil service is a professional body of officials permanent paid and skilled in the words of ian gladden civil service is the name of an important government institution comprising the staff of central administration the state it is more it stands for a spirit essential to the success of modern democracy and ideal vocation in public officials who devote their service to the community history of civil services in india a remarkable feature of the administrative system in federally governed india is the deliberate retention of all india services the personnel of which are interchangeable between the center and the state governments india has the tradition of the civil services since ancient times patelia in his book arthashastra has mentioned three categories of government employees officer yukta clerk upyukta and servant tatpurusham The mansabdari system was developed during the Mughal administration which combined civil and military bureaucracy. Civil services during the British period. The history of civil services during the British period can be discussed as per the following headings. Charter Act of 1853, Macaulay Committee, Atchison Commission 1886. Public Service Commission 1912 Government of India Act 1919 Lee Commission 1923 and Government of India Act 1935 Charter Act of 1853 Provision for open competition was made by the Charter Act of 1853 The old powers rights and privileges of the court of directors to nominate candidates for admission to helebury were to come to a close in regard to all vacancies which occurred on or after april 30 1854 the act provided for appointment of members of the coveted civil services on the basis of suitable competitive examination which was to be held in london and thus get rid of the patronage system macaulay committee the president of the board of control sir charles wood appointed a five member committee headed by lord macaulay to advise on the measures to be adopted to give effect to the act of 1853 the committee popularly known as the committee on indian civil service laid down certain age limits for the admission to the college of helebury the first examination under the board of control was held in 1855 at london on the basis of 
the recommendations. Etchinson Commission 1886 The commission was appointed in 1886 and was headed by Sir Charles Etchinson. It prepared a scheme of admission of Indians to every branch of public services and to look into employment in covented and non-covented services. Public Service Commission 1912 The question of Indianization was examined by a Public Service Commission in 1912 under the chairmanship of Lord Islington, Governor of New Zealand. It observed that Indian constituted only 5% of the civil service. The commission supported two separate channels of access to the Indian civil service itself. One in England, open to all alike, and one in India, open to statutory natives of India only. It proposed categorization of services under the government of India into class 1 and class 2. Government of India Act 1919. This act recommended a threefold classification of services into all India's provincial and subordinate services. All the imperial services functioning in the province, whether in the reserved or transferred departments, were designated as the All India Services. Special safeguards were guaranteed to the members of All India Services in regard to dismissal, salaries, pensions and other rights. In 1922, the first competitive examination was held under the supervision of Civil Service Commission. The Indian candidates selected on the basis of results were put on probation for two years at an English university. Lee Commission 1923 Royal Commission on Superior Civil Service was appointed under the chairmanship of Lord Lee in 1923. The commission divided the services in three main classes, All India Services, Central Civil Services and Provincial Services. Government of India Act 1935 The Act of 1935 provided for a Federal Public Service Commission and a Provincial Public Service Commission for each province so that the public services may be completely free from political interference and the merit rule may be put in operation which is so necessary for the economical an efficient conduct of public affairs. Indian Civil Services After Independence The Indian political leaders choose to retain elements of British structure in a unified administrative system such as an open entry system based on academic achievements, elaborate training arrangements, permanency of tenure, Important posts at union, state and district level reserved for the civil service, a regular graduated scale of pay with pension and other benefits, a system of promotions and transfers based predominantly on seniority while designing a successor civil service. The civil services in India can be grouped into three broad categories. Services whose members serve both the union and the state governments are termed as All India Services. Services whose members serve only the union government are termed as Central Civil Services. Apart from these, the state governments have their own group of services, State Civil Services. The posts in the union and the state governments are hierarchically arranged into four groups. Group A, B, C and D. Vallabhai Patel, who was the then Home Minister, was the principal advocate of this institution. The steel frame of the whole structure, a subsequent of the All India Service, endeared itself to the 
Iron Man of India. He is also known as the father of civil services in India. Now this slide shows the classification of civil services in India. The first one, All India Service, examples are IAS, IPS, Indian Forest Service. The second one, Central Civil Service, Group A and B and Group C and D. And the third one is State Civil Services, in which the individual states have their own services. The key objectives of the government in creating All India Services are preserving national unity and integrity and uniform standards of administration, neutrality and objectivity, non-political, secular and non-sectarian outlook, competence, efficiency and professionalism, and entry by attracting the best and the brightest throughout the career, besides integrity and idealism. Civil service after independence will discuss the recruitment, training, domain expertise, grading reforms, efficiency, accountability, performance appraisal and management of civil servants in the following slides. Recruitment A.D. Gorwala committee recommended that recruitment to all the grades of the government service should be conducted in a manner which eradicates scope for patronage and suggested that this principle should also apply to the temporary staff. Dr. Ramaswamy Mudaliar Committee Report 1956 on Public Services Qualifications for Recruitment recommended that a university degree should be the minimum qualification for recruitment into the higher civil services whereas for secretarial and ministerial services, a university degree need not be insisted upon. The Krishnachari Committee Report, Report on Indian and State Administrative Services and Problems of District Administration by V. T. Krishnachari, 1962, analyzed the recruitments to class 1 and class 2 services in the state governments and recommended that recruitments should be made annually. The first administrative reforms commission urged the importance of proper personal planning and cadre management. It recommended that direct recruitment to class 2 posts of section officers should be stopped and these posts may be filled by promotion of assistance. It also recommended that recruitment to clerical and other secretarial posts should be conducted through simple objective tests. The Commission advised constitution of recruitment boards for appointment to class 3 and class 4 employees. The DS Kothari Committee report on recruitment policy and selection methods 1976 advocated a major change in the examination system. They advised a two-stage examination process, a preliminary examination followed by a main examination. This committee also suggested changes in the training pattern of the civil services. The fifth Central Pay Commission supported that employment on contract basis should be encouraged and the government employees should have the right to retain their lien for two years in case they wish to migrate to the private sector. The Civil Service Examination Review Committee 2001 It was chaired by Professor Yoginder K. Alag which proposed major changes in the structure of the examination system for recruitment to the civil services. It advocated testing the candidates in a common subject rather than on optional subjects. The Committee on Civil Service Reforms, Hota Committee Report 2004, made suggestions on recruitment and recommended that the age for entrance to the higher civil service should be between 21 to 24 years 
with a five years age concession for members of the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and three years for the other backward classes. It was also suggested that aptitude and leadership tests may be introduced for selection and that probationers may be allowed one month's time for commencement of training to exercise their option for services. The report on public administration by A. D. Gorwala in 1951 states that we should have a suitable personnel to staff the public policies. So it's very essential that we have a proper recruitment and training system and adequate organization and method setup. It recommended a training, induction training, as well as a periodical training so that a civil servant is kept updated and his knowledge is refreshed. Besides an appointment of a director of training to do the needful. The report on Indian and State Administrative Services and Problems of District Administration by V. T. Krishnachari in 1962 emphasized that the state civil service officers should also undergo a structured training like the IS officers. It also asked for the establishment of training institutions in states with the help of National Academy of Administration. The first ARC report urged the training should prepare the civil servant for his current as well as future job responsibility. The committee to review in-service training of IS officers, Ugandar Committee 2003 recommended three mid-career training programs that's in the 12th, 20th and 28th years of the service. In the case of 12th year, the service training is to be of eight weeks consisting of five weeks of academic content and three weeks of study. Domain expertise. The first ARC classified higher civil service posts into two categories. Posts in the field known as the functional posts and posts at the headquarters. The functional services include engineering services, accounts and income tax services. It recommended the conversion of IAS into a functional service. The Surindranath Committee report in 2003 suggested that assigning particular domains to the officers should be the key step in their selection. The Hota Committee on Civil Service Reforms in 2004 suggested that domain assignment should be introduced to the civil servants to make them skillful and professional. It also suggested the impalement and posting of official domain assignment and competitive selection as per their skills. Grading reforms. The first ARC suggested a unified grading system wherein the posts with similar qualifications and responsibilities were put in the same grade. It also asked for the principle of equal pay for equal work for the entire country at all the levels. This system, it said, would address the imbalance in remuneration of various posts. The commission also recommended that the number of grades should range between 20 to 25. Efficiency. There has been a succession of committees that were asked to recommend measures to increase the efficiency of the civil servants. The Secretariat Reorganization Committee in 1947 examined the functions of existing departments of the government of India and made recommendations to increase their efficiency. In 1945, the Gopalaswami Ayanga Committee recommended restructuring of Central Secretariat, identifying a department with a secretary's charge and ministry with a minister's charge, abolition of separate grades of additional secretary, grouping of departments dealing with 
economic and social services into four bureaus as well as creating an ONM machinery. A.D. Gorawala in his reports to the Planning Commission suggested there should be a greater understanding between the ministers and the civil servants. The Appleby report in 1953 contained recommendations relating to the establishment of ONM machinery and an institute of public administration. The Fifth Pay Commission in 2000 stressed upon the need to optimize the size of the government machinery. Expenditure Reforms Commission in 2001 urged a drastic downsizing of the government staff to have a professional and skilled staff. The Committee on Civil Service Reforms, Hota Committee, emphasized the use of ICTs to make it more accessible, effective and accountable. Accountability of Civil Service the Committee on Prevention of Corruption, Sanathan Committee's recommendations include the constitution of CVC and administrative vigilance divisions in all departments and major organizations of the government, as well as framing the conduct rules for the civil servants. The first ARC recommended introducing performance budgeting, establishment of Lokpal, to deal with the complaints against administrative acts of ministries and secretaries to the government at the center. It also recommended setting up Lok Ayuks to deal with the complaints at the state level. The Hota Committee advocated under Section 13 and 19 of the Prevention of Corruption Act and Section 197 of the Criminal Procedure to be amended to protect honest civil servants from prosecution and harassment. It also wanted a code of ethics to be drawn up for the civil servant. Performance appraisal of the civil servants. The first ARC suggested several changes in the performance appraisal system. The term performance record should be used instead of confidential report. The civil servant is expected to report to his reporting officer an account of work during the assessment year and it becomes a part of performance record. Grading of performance to be done in three categories, fit for promotion, out of turn, fit for promotion, not fit for promotion. As yet, the category unfit for promotion needs to be scrapped. Adverse remark, if any, given to be communicated to the civil servant. The fifth Central Pay Commission recommended an ACR format based on 10-point scale as in the armed forces. Final grading of the ACR to be communicated to the employee. An appraisal of Group A officers so that full picture of their performance and personality emerges after every five years. Restoration of annual confidential report for Group D cadres. The report of the group constituted a review of the system of performance appraisal, promotion, empanelment and placement of the All India Services and other services. Surindranath Committee in 2003 recommended to the performance appraisal should primarily be used for overall development, responsibility of monitoring, the timely writing of annual performance reports, entire performance record including the overall grades. The Hota Committee on Civil Service Reforms 2004 recommended replacing the ACR with a system of performance assessment against agreed work plans. Management of Civil Services The first ACR suggested the creation of a separate department of personnel to be responsible for formulation, inspection and review of personnel policies of the Central and All India Services, talent hunting, development of personnel for senior management and processing of appointment for senior posts, manpower planning, training and career development as well as research public personnel administration. Besides this, discipline and welfare of staff, machinery for redressal of their grievances, 
liaison with UPSC, state governments and other professional institutions, staffing of middle level positions in the central secretariat. The fifth pay commission proposed the constitution of a high powered civil service board both at the center and the state levels. It also suggested fixation of minimum tenure for each post. Besides advocating that no premature transfer should be allowed. Now let us conclude this module by taking up a few important points. We have understood the history of Indian civil services throughout the various phases. And we have also understood that if the government has to prove to be efficient, the training, the recruitment, as well as reforms in the civil services are a major requirement over a period of time. Today, we have our civil services patterned on the British system and they are making the government better with their training as well as recruitment practices.